uh, defeating the enemy within. And by the enemy within, uh, I mean the fact that we have a movement with millions of people that are directly affected. We have over 770,000 or whatever the figure is currently of registered families out there and several million family members uh, that are affiliated with uh, those registered citizens. And yet at the same time, we have budgets uh, I mean, I think our Arsenal National just now started receiving more money than Arsenal New Mexico. Now, let's be clear. Arsenal New Mexico is the poorest state in the country with the fewest registrants. And they just now started getting more income than we get. Uh, but despite that, I mean, you know, our situation is horrible. You know, we have, you know, two or three or four or five people doing all the work. Uh, we have people that we know sit around all the time, have no jobs because you can't work, and could do data entry, could do call people for memberships, could all, do all these things, but, but they don't do it. And what we also know is our paltry little income and our paltry little checking account. I think we got $29,000 right now, but what are we going to do with that? It's not enough to file a lawsuit or anything. Um, we know that everybody could give, you know, $5 a month as an example. I'm sorry. And people tell me, oh, registrants, they don't have any money. They can't possibly. I am sorry. A street person, there's street people on my corners all the time. They make anywhere from 5 to $20 an hour uh, begging for money. They could donate $5. And that's the, that's the bottom line. So that's the theory. So the M&Ms on your seat are kind of um, just a way of just trying to impress upon what I believe one of our biggest problems are. And it's something that a number of us, including some people in admin, have, are starting to come to recognize. And that is we have two major deficiencies. And I, I just, just to be cute, I term to M&M. &M, okay. And anybody, just even from what I just said, what, what's the first M that we're missing in this movement? Money. 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 Okay. <laughs> so we're, miss, we're missing money. And so let's just address that just briefly. What do we mean by money? And I'm going to add to this. Who, you guys are activists, so this is this is a little. And some of this is kind of, yeah, like you said, you know, preaching to the choir. But who's going to save us? Who is going to save the 800,000 registered families in New Mexico? Is it going to be the ACLU? Is it going to be the Supreme Court making this magic decision? Is it going to be George Soros? Is it going to be Ronald McDonald? Who's it going to be? It's going to be us, just like the African-American movement, just like the gay rights movement, just like any other movement. It's going to be those individuals affected that are going to save themselves. To be able to do that, we're going to need money. Do you know of any successful organization out there that doesn't have, let's say, at least some sort of paid staff? I work with a, a group, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I work with the underdogs here. Okay, I'm talking underdogs. So one of the groups I belong to is the Blue Ribbon Coalition. They're the premier, uh, premier organization in the country defending our access to public lands against politicians and radical environments. Uh, and they have a staff of, uh, you know, six or seven people that are paid full time. Um, it's shameful, it's pitiful, but at least they have that. I'm a cave explorer. <laughs> there are almost no cave explorers in the whole country. And they have 33,000 members despite that. They just bought a building the size of this one. Um, it used to be a church. Kind of like, just looks just like this if it's in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, how are they able to do it with 33,000 members for this real niche thing that yeah, okay, people are passionate about cave exploration, but, but there's not that many out there. So they're able to do it. Clearly, they're using money to further cause. What do we need money for? What kind of everything. things? Everything, sure. But lawsuits, uh, you know, maybe like us, we're trying to figure out how to file a retroactivity lawsuit in our state. Uh, maybe it's, I mean, there's lots of things you might be suing over proximity restrictions like Janice's. Right. So there's lots of things legally you need money for. Uh, you know, you know, you need things to create business cards, brochures. You need to, uh, uh, you need uh, exactly is uh, eventually yeah, exactly. Uh, and another example is we've learned over time that we just simply cannot um, 
pop up to the legislature and say, hello, we're here for the day. We're going to get this. It's not going to happen. Well, we've learned we literally have to have one person full time present at the legislature the whole time. And for us, that's 30 days on an uh, on a uh, even year and 60 days an odd year. Just 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 how our legislature works. Uh, we have to have other people that go up there, but we have to have somebody there the whole time because bills get heard at 3.30 in the morning, things change, surprises, they don't put stuff on a calendar. Uh, once you get into the session, you can't meet with people. So we actually, in New Mexico, we compensate, um, not enough, but we give a little bit of a you know compensation for somebody to stay up there during a the session because it costs them money and they can't work. And unfortunately, most of us, have to work. Most of us have to make a living. We can't afford to do this full time. Uh, eventually, if I just kind of stretch out what we're talking about here a little further, we do need to, as I believe someday, we need to have a national office with four or five paid people uh, that support you know, they have a staff attorney, a staff paralegal, uh, an affiliate coordinator that just goes around helping us, whatever. And then probably many of the states at some point need to at least have one full-time paid person that just commits to doing that. That's a big part of our problem is we don't have that staff. So the other M, again, with my cute little uh, play on things, uh, is manpower. manpower. Exactly. So manpower. So this is our other big deficiency. Again, 33,000 registered or whatever you want to call it, members of the uh, National Speological Society. Uh, and there's probably a total of maybe 50 or 60 total thousand, thousand total cavers in a country. And um, lately there's been some issues with access. Um, and, and so maybe they are fighting for the rights a little bit. We won't get, in, get into that right now. But it's certainly not the same thing. That's a sport. That's a hobby. It's having fun. Uh, nobody's telling you where you can live, what you can do, that you can never work again. Um, so how is it that they have, they're able to develop that kind of manpower that they need? They've got, they bought that church, they gutted it. I mean, it looked like this, but it wouldn't quite suit their needs. They've got 50 volunteers over there every weekend working on it. There's pictures in every newsletter of all the volunteers in there donating their time, supplies, resources to fix that place up and get it the way the NSS and, and all the campgrounds and everything around it. And uh, I mean, it's just incredible. So that's what we're really here to talk about. We're here to talk about money and manpower and how we fix these two key deficiencies. And, and I do realize this movement is, uh, what do you say, uh, really, he started in, uh, I guess, 2005 was kind of, kind of the, 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 the RSOL. And, and that's not a real long time for a movement. But I think we can all say truly, I mean, I can say that in New Mexico, we have killed ourselves. We have tried everything. And I know we're not alone. And that's why I'm bringing you guys together to talk about and see if we can come up with um, some ideas. But the getting back to money, and again, we got to talk about what is our buying power on money. Yeah, you know, if we got 774,000, and, and I know it, it varies depending upon what number you look at. Just imagine 774,000, say, take 10% of that. How many is that? 77,000 people, if you took 10,000. 10, imagine those people giving $5 a month. I mean, it doesn't take long to see the math. In the National Speological Society, we got like 50% of the people, basically, as members donating money. And it's a hell of a lot more than $5. What's the difference, Lee? So that's the question. What is the difference? And that's what we want to try to get at. And that's part of what your worksheets are for. I personally believe that our movement is difficult. It's uncomfortable. It makes people deal with uncomfortable things in their lives, uncomfortable feelings. You can't go out and brag about it. It's just like take a law firm. People are like, well, why don't law firms donate their time to defend us and help us file lawsuits? Do you really think if they put their stamp on a retroactively lost retroactivity lawsuit in New Mexico, it's going to help their image? I mean, that's part of the problem. It doesn't. It, it, it feels good to save the children. It feels good to save the puppy dogs. Uh, it feels good to. Uh, um, you know, do, to feed the homeless. It feels good. It's fun to go 
discover new things and do science. Um, but, you know, this is not fun. And, and I think that's a part of the problem that we, we simply uh, have, to, uh, have to overcome. And again, if I take this number and I think I did something like, so, you know, take two and a half percent of that number as volunteers. What would we have? We'd have 35,000 volunteers. So the point is we only need a small percentage of donations and labor from this 774,000 pool to be successful. And given what we're facing, to me, it seems like a no-brainer. Um, and, and, and the question is, uh, you know, what, and, and just imagine your state. Imagine you had, uh, in our state, we have this, again, we have the, probably one of the smaller battles here in the room. Uh, but in our state, if we had 20 or 30 volunteers, I can't even imagine what we could accomplish. If we had, we have around 3,800, I think, now on our registry. You know, if half of them gave $10, $20 a month, that would be full-time lobbying. That would be nonstop litigation, never-ending litigation, an office within a full-time employee. I mean, it, it's really, I mean, I mean, that's incredible on just a handful of the small percentage of people giving some money. And the fact of the matter is the way it works is you do have people that can give more. There are billionaires that are on the registry that could give a million dollars a year. So, you know, you can make that $5 number grow through the people that can give more. So what I did was I put a, I put a uh, worksheet on your chairs. And, 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 I, and again, I realized that I've got two sides to this. And on the first side, uh, it's basically talking about what you do uh, as far as how many hours do you, and we're not looking for, we're just, take, take a quick guess. How many hours, man hours a year do you think you do, contribute and how many dollars do you contribute? And then I'm asking to dig deep and some of you are, you know, already superheroes, so you're going to come out looking really good. I will not. I can tell you that right now. And that's going to be the interesting part. Uh, but so after you do that, ask yourself, why don't I donate more time to our soil, my state affiliate? And why don't I donate more money? Then the flip side, because, again, obviously many of you are going to be heroes. I've said, what are you hearing in your state? So let's compare notes. So let's see what are the reasons for not donating time or money that you're hearing in your state from other people. Because, uh, and so now we're taking you, the leadership, out of this. What are you hearing? Because those are probably the reasons we need to focus. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> again, I'm going to start with myself. I'm going to start kind of with what I wrote down. So the charity I, I just put down, uh, frankly, is uh, I'm going to call it caving because uh, the, the so-called nonprofit that I, I have I, actually is not an official nonprofit because we're kind of some rebels. But, uh, and I probably give about 1,000 plus hours a year uh, to that. And I probably contribute, I'm guessing, you know, gas and, and, and stuff like that, uh, if I can include my gas and stuff, probably about 2500 a year. Uh, it's definitely ahead of RSOL currently. Uh, and it wasn't always the case, but it is now. Um, so reasons that I don't give more time, I, I'm going to put it burnout uh, as uh, one of my reasons. Um, you know, I, I worked very virulently at this for many years, and uh, after we hosted the conference, that uh, went very well. We had, uh, great we had a great conference, and it went very well, but um, I don't know, I just kind of hit a wall after that. Uh, the next thing is kids, and and, and, I'll, and I can tell you that, that kind of, they take a lot of time. Um, that's kind of a focus for me in life. They're young, they're at home. Uh, and you know, I, when I did the conference, I was on the news 24 hours a day for eight, eight or 10 weeks. And, uh, and, and that's, and once you, you know, start putting kids in the equation, it's kind of hard, hard, hard to be involved in it at that level. When bankrupt, like everybody else with my business that I had for so many years, had to start a new business. Guess what? Anybody in here ever start a new business, small business, small business? A lot of hours. A lot of hours. Lot of hours. And I'm not, I'm two and a half years into it, and I got several more years of that before things get uh, <clears throat> better. Um, and just to me, honestly, in the end, caving's more fun uh, to cave uh, and explore and discover new things. And, you know, I, I was... 
you know, I, I spent 10 weeks in the media for the conference. I've, I've done thousands of interviews for cave discoveries and stuff, and that was a lot more fun interview to do, believe me. Uh, believe me, a lot more fun. Um, so reasons why I don't, know, don't donate money, and that's, so this is on, again, the time side. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'll do, I'll do time, okay? And then on the money side, which, uh, again, I, I, I'm sure I used to give, certainly give more. Um, I, I would say our financial situation got worse. Matter of fact, it ain't great at the moment. But I say that. And, and, and I, and I, and so these are some of the things that I hear. And, again, I've done a lot of work trying to overcome this. Larry Neely, um, you know, you know, joined the team a couple few years ago, and he started, and he's tried a lot, and we've had a lot of trouble. So there's some of my things, and why I guess I would ask the audience at this point, a couple of years ago, I would have been shot standing up here for, for saying these sorts of things. I can tell you our leadership, some of which is downstairs, when we, we started talking about the fact that we needed money a few a couple of years ago, they wanted us to go jump off a cliff. They were like, no, wait a minute. These are the impoverished people. These are people being hurt. You can't ask them for money. Well, guess what? How did the African-American civil rights movement become so powerful? Five and 10 cents in a collection plate in churches in the South every Sunday. That's how they became successful. Now they have billion dollar nonprofit groups, you know. Uh, but 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 so, but this truly would have been controversial a while back. But now it's time to have that discussion. How do we really start making this happen? Because it, it, the money is going to come from us. It is going to come from the individuals, and uh, it is not wrong to say, particularly if you don't want to give any time. And, and, and that's why I say we don't need as many people giving time. Five, ten, fifteen people in our state could do all the work we need. But what we need is money to support those people so they can have the gas money, they can get the motel rooms at the Capitol, they can lobby, they can go, whatever we need, file lawsuits, do litigation, whatever we need to do to get that done. And everybody that is a registered citizen and every family member that's a registered, part of a registered family uh, does have a duty to give some, whatever they can. If you can give a thousand a month, that's great. If you can give five dollars a month, that's great. So what what I'm kind of hearing here on the money sign is, uh, it, I, I'm I'm hearing really a strong idea here, and that is educating on the need. What is it we need money for? And I will tell you and that. Where is it going? I mean, yeah. Town. And I'm just putting bring one more to meetings. Uh, you know that that because that's. Well, that's, that's part of the to me, it's hard to get somebody involved on the internet. And, and I agree. I mean, we just put a we put a lawyer on our on our uh, board in New Mexico, and he gives dollars and stuff um, now. And uh, but we had to go out and find him and bring him in. You know, so that that's a good point. So almost, I, so I'd say almost. Uh, I like the idea. One more. one of the things I see though, and, and I'll, I'll, I had to kind of wait. Saying I get people all the time that refuse to donate money. Life is good. Things are going great. Then that happens and they come to us. And it's like, well, wait a minute. When life was good, you didn't help us. You didn't donate any money. And, and I'm sorry, when, especially when people, if somebody comes up with a legal problem, we don't even talk to them if they're not a member. We just want, we don't, we don't, we quit, quit about six, eight, nine months ago. If you cause a legal problem, we won't even talk to you on the phone. We just want, if you're not a member, if you're, you've not been paying five or 10, $20 a month, we're not going to talk to you. It's a waste of our time. Because you're, you, you know, you're wasting our time. Uh, and but if you've been a member for a long time, donating money, we might be able to fix, fix your failure to register for you. We have some neat little tricks we can do. But uh, so some are unable to to and uh, in fact, if you're on, and of course if you're on um, if you're on probation or parole, you're not going to be. Some have no support when they get out. They don't have those family members right. that will. Mm -hmm. Well, but one of the problems is, though, if we, we say, well, mostly 774,000, and we're, of course, we're talking about people that are out of prison here, um, that are out there, if we just say, well, most of them don't have money, then we have no money, because nobody else is going to give the money. Um, there are always going to be people that can't give or can't give much. Um, but I can tell you, I, I do not, I believe that just about everybody has an income source, and just about everybody can give something. We have people mail us 2 or $3 an envelope. Uh, that's not much, but I have to respect that because that tells me that 
I, I really believe in those particular cases. I really believe that's that's, 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 yeah. that's where they're at. Right. But I, but yeah. but but we but we but we really do we do really do respect it. And we realize that some people are on probation and parole, so they can't work on the computer. They can't do things on the internet for us. So, but I guess the point is everybody can contribute in some way. And if you don't have any money, okay, then you can jump to the time and manpower side. Because guess what? If you don't have a job, you're sitting around a house all the time, uh, you know, come to committee meetings. Now, uh, now, here's the interesting thing about some of this stuff, though, that you're talking about. It's kind of free and it's kind of not. I mean, committee meetings, that's usually free because they just jump in a car and commute up with us. But if they had to expend fuel, it might be more expensive than donating $5 a month because it takes takes me using my truck 30 bucks in gas to get up there uh, to our, 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 our to our you know to our uh, Santa Fe <coughs> um, so they can <coughs> they can be uh, one thing that we're looking for that pretty much anybody with a phone could do is a membership coordinator we're just looking for people to call and say hey your, your membership laps can we get you to re uh, and that's one thing, like, you see any organization you belong to, they will send you four or five notices. Hey, your membership's about to lapse. Oh, it just collapsed. Can we get you to re-up? We actually have that, Margaret. We have a membership coordinator. Yeah, we don't. We, we've, we've tried, we've had people volunteer and volunteer and never do anything. Uh, stuff we don't charge membership dues in California, so. Stuff, stuff, stuff envelope. In, in, in Mexico, we have, what we do is we have, what we've set up is the minimum is five dollars a month, but we have we have that's the basic, that's the bronze, and then the gold's like ten, and then the uh, you know or the the silver's ten, and then the the, the gold is twenty, and then the, the platinum is thirty or whatever. So we have different levels that you can pick whichever level. And the other thing we found is the people that generally uh, do the best, the people just set it up through PayPal and just get it done every that's month. A great idea. But the problem is not everybody does this. Not everybody has a credit card. Not everybody has a PayPal account. And so what you know we've been struggling with is, as we we need somebody to call these folks, and we need to figure out how to get them to. Leave. If you're not telling people about your successes, and if you're not telling people what you're going to do with their money, they're not going to give you. Yeah, money. I mean, and let me let me add to that. It, 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 as you run your state affiliates, you really want to have an open, transparent. We show up with our bank statement every time with a reconciliation and a treasury. Well, guys, I'm sorry we didn't get to do the full 90 minutes because I think it would have been interesting to break out into discussion groups about this and expand upon this. But I, I, the, the basic thing here is keep it on that the money and the manpower are the two things we need. There, be thinking about that throughout the rest of the conference and how we're going to get that money and how we're going to get that manpower to make this movement grow beyond where we're at because we, we know to be successful ultimately to get where we want to get, which some days no registry at all, right? 50, 60, 80, 100 years down the road, wherever that is. But to get to that point, those are the two keys. And how are we going to overcome, you know, the, uh, you know, overcome our demons within that keep us from contributing more? And how are we going to encourage others to do that? And it's just more of a, this is more of an exercise to start getting, getting people talking and thinking about this. So. Well, I mean, 